The MP Jam set in Bitwig Studio is designed to turn the music production overlay for the Sensor Morph into really a comprehensive DJ set or electronic music improvising instrument. Um, right now it's set up for like a real techno sound, but everything's based on samplers, so you can swap the sounds however you like. Uh, this first track is the drum kits, and you can see this is just running uh, 808 samples, you know, our classic electronic music. So we've got the kicks and snares and hats and some toms and cymbals and all that type of thing are on those pads. But rather than going ahead and playing the pads with your fingers to keep a groove, uh, this is designed to just hold down pads and trigger different uh, patterns. All the patterns are based on the arpeggiators. So really what you're doing is triggering this little pattern down here as set up in the arpeggiator. And each one has a different pattern. You can see the snare has some drops on it. Uh, so this is four on the floor, and then this could be uh, every other, uh, the second and the fourth, or the first and the third. Depending on when you start it. So I can build up my beats just by holding down the pads and creating that way. Uh, on these, we have a bunch of just electronic synthesizer sounds and loops. Uh, to bring energy in. Um, and instead of just increasing the volume, we actually have a fader sweep too. So it fades in as well as brings uh, the fader up. And each one, if you can build up kind of a big mess here, just press the stop button and that stops all those loops. On these sliders, we have a backing beat. And the bass. Bring those both in. And up here on the top left, we have different scenes for those beats. We can take a look in this track. Uh, we can see that we have these two different scenes and we're just triggering scenes for those two loops that are controlled by these sliders. And uh, similarly with the knob loops, that's all driven by scenes. So you can actually really kind of build this up to be something much bigger and have a bunch of different scenes to trigger different things on these loops and these uh, sliders here. Uh, so you can really build up a much longer set than what we have here. Uh, on the bottom, we've just got some nice uh, vocal textures. Uh, so those kind of bring in a nice sort of melodic type of experience, I guess. And uh, those have a nice reverb and delay effect on them. Uh, we can take a look, uh, if you want to get into the weeds with that, we can see how we've organized this uh, into two separate drum racks. We have the drum machine that does uh, all the 4x4 and we also have the vocals on a separate drum machine uh, with all of these uh, vocal samples here um, and that allows us to sort of easily build up a different effects chain. We could have done that with sends as well. Um, I just kind of like to break them up into separate pieces uh, so it has a gate and then a delay and a reverb on it um, and it makes it easy to separate these two things which are really kind of for very different purposes. Um, we can take a look at the MIDI mapping, which actually has a lot of interesting tricks um, that sort of take advantage and make up for some of the things that you're going to find in the uh, when using the Sensor Morph. So, um, for example, this stop button, it's actually triggering the frequency uh, slider on all of these tracks that we have set up in the knob loops. So each one has a frequency knob uh, that's just a macro that's controlling the frequency, you can see how it's uh, mapped to frequency here on the filter. Um, but it's also doing a couple other things. Uh, you can see that it's controlling this slider here on the add. So it adds a little bit of logic to turn this button on, which is an attenuator. So that's controlling the amplitude on these two tools. And what this does is it allows us to use our big fat finger on this knob without having to get all the way to zero. So it's kind of a little bit of an offset so we can bring things in smoothly and cut them out without having a bunch of low frequency rumble 
uh, because the filter is still letting in a little bit of stuff. Um, and that's the case on all of these knobs. Uh, each knob is controlling this frequency macro, which controls the addition, which triggers this button, which controls the filter and the attenuators. And uh, we've got some little EQs in here to just keep things uh, nicely mixed and organized. Uh, so things don't really um, interfere with each other, especially on the low end to make it muddy. Um, so that's kind of the overview on these things. We also have the master effects. Um, these are just sending out uh, continuous controllers. Um, and those are here on the pitch and mix and grain rate for these different uh, controls on the master. So we can go ahead and take a look at the master. And we just got these three effects in series uh, that these three buttons control. Uh, in this case, I have actually a, a uh, VST called Fracture XT that I kind of like better. So we can take a listen to that pressure effect, which is a modulator. That's just a modulator uh, on the delay. And so it's doing this rapid pitch shifting, kind of like scratching a turntable. Um, it's kind of a neat effect. Really what I like is this Fracture XT, but um, I encourage you to go buy that VST, but you may not have it. So I wanted to make sure everything did something the way it was supposed to. Uh, Fracture XT is by Glitch Machines. Just check it out. It's super fun. Um, and then this pitch shifter is just using the standard uh, pitch shifter in Bitwig, and it's changing the grain. You can see it's changing a few different parameters as I push down on it, um, including making the mix. <laughs> And then this is just a standard delay uh, set to an eighth note with a high feedback. And we're just affecting the mix knob here. Uh, so that is uh, kind of an overview of how everything's mapped. You can start thinking about how you might want to bring your own sounds in or just jam out on this on your own.